the Rolls-Royce Phantom, the Mercedes Maybach S-Class, the Bentley Continental GT, all superb luxury cars. But everyone's favorite is the Genesis G90. No, never heard of it? Most haven't. It's the flagship model from Hyundai's luxury brand, Genesis. And it delivers, even coming in a long wheelbase version for the dictators among us. For me, the most amazing thing isn't that this luxury car has gone unnoticed, but it's amazing aerodynamics that has gone unnoticed. And I find that outrageous. Actually, one of your amigos, Jared, commissioned us to simulate this car and investigate its aerodynamics. This is what we found. Its drag coefficient came in at just 0.26. That is very good, and especially so for a luxury car. That's because luxury cars don't usually have a large focus on aerodynamics. To give you an idea of just how good this is, when we simulated the Bentley Continental GT, it had a drag coefficient of 0.36. This is 0.26, almost a third lower. In this video, we'll cover how it was able to achieve such a low drag coefficient despite being a land yacht. And if you'd like us to simulate your very own car, let us know here. Now this simulation was done at 100 miles per hour. In this cut plane, looking at the front, it's actually a little hard to see why its drag coefficient is so low. Like all good luxury cars, it has a big imposing grille, but that means they have a very large face at the front plowing through the air. We can see in this velocity plot, with the color bar in meters per second, there is a lot of green and blue flow. Blue here is evil. It means the flow is very close to stationary, and in this region, that's very bad. That's because the flow has crashed into the front and dumped most of its kinetic energy into it. As a result, the pressure, which we can see in this plot, is very high. Literally the entire front is just red. That's high pressure. That high pressure is pushing the car back and creating drag. And I think it's made even worse because there's a little lip at the top where the grill meets the hood. It's not much, but it's just something that provides just a little bit more resistance to the flow that wants to flow over it. So the G90 has started out pretty terribly. And honestly, that makes the fact that its drag coefficient is just 0.26 even more impressive. And it's not like this grill is bad just in this plane. If we jump over half a meter to the left, we still get most of this large front face covered in high pressure. So it's really the entire face that is exposed to this high pressure, which means a lot of drag. And in this plane, things are a little more complex than the center plane we saw earlier. That's because here, the front is rounded as we approach the side of the car. That does allow the flow to maintain higher speed, as we can see in this velocity plot, where we have far less blue flow. But Genesis put this little spoiler at the bottom now. We don't have that in the center plane. This spoiler just grows as we get to the side of the car. The reason why it's bad here is because it catches the air above it. You can see with the lines of the velocity plot how all this air is bending down, but much of it doesn't flow underneath the lip. It's forced to redirect around the sides of the front. Now, why is that bad? What's the difference between whether the flow goes here underneath the lip or just redirects around the side? Well, the more you redirect the flow and mess with it, the more energy of it you are wasting. We can see that here, we do get high pressure just above the lip. That's creating even more drag. So while the front looks good, it's pretty clear that it's really bad for drag. But while this region is bad, a region very close by is actually phenomenal. That's the lip where the front meets the underbody. Looking back at the center plane, while the flow of the front is redirected sharply, it still manages to flow underneath this lip without separating. You can see here how there is no wake. The flow just follows the surface perfectly. That is very different to many cars where this lip is sharp and the flow is forced to turn around a 90 degree angle or even greater. It can't do that, so it separates and a large wake is formed. That comes with high drag. In the drag orbit for the G90, you can see that there is no drag being produced from this front lip region. Genesis did a really good job here. But how did they achieve that? Well, they really just did one very simple trick. That was to slant the front underbody up. You can see how it nicely slopes up. This simple trick is so effective because it reduces the angle that the flow traveling around the front lip has to turn. This sloping is so effective that even half a meter over to the left, where we have this quite prominent lip poking out, 
the flow still stays attached underneath it. That is very impressive, and the impressiveness doesn't stop there. If we look underneath, the boundary layer stays very thin. What that means is that if we look close to the surface, you can see this very thin green layer. That's good, the fact that it's so thin. By maintaining a thin boundary layer, you're reducing how much turbulence you get there. That then means you're feeding the underbody with higher speed and cleaner flow. The underbody will then work better. So this front lip is very good for drag reduction. Moving to the front of the hood, because we know that this section protrudes out a little and provides a little resistance for the flow to go over it, it's not surprising that we do get some drag on it. Despite that, the rest of the hood is good. The flow stays detached past this little bit. Another bad region we usually get on cars is the junction between the hood and the windshield. This region is notoriously bad for drag because this is where the flow over the hood hits the windshield. It decelerates and converts some of its energy into static pressure, pushing the car back. This car is no exception. In a velocity plot in the center plane, we get exactly that too. We also get this in the plane half a meter to the left. You can see how we have quite high speed flow, yellow flow, hitting the windshield and then it becomes green. What that means is that the flow as it approaches the windshield junction slows more and more. That's because there is other flow ahead of it, also slow, and so all this flow is being squeezed and decelerated. We then get higher pressure that is then pushing the car back and creating drag. But the Genesis' styling makes this region a little better than it could be. Because it is a luxury car, the hood and the front in general is sleek and blended together. That means the angle between the hood and the windshield isn't as bad. The flow over the hood is already slightly in a direction that it should be to then be redirected by the windshield. So it doesn't crash into the windshield as much, so the pressure isn't as high, nor does the higher pressure cover as large a region here. All that means that there's less force pushing the car back, so the drag coefficient drops. But there is something interesting on the top half of the windshield. So this pressure plot, whether it's this center plane or the plane half a meter over to the left, we see on the top part of the windshield, it's covered in low pressure, this blue region. That's actually really good for drag reduction. That's because if you had low pressure on the upstream face, like we have here on the windshield, you're actually sucking the car forwards now. That's eating into the drag you're producing elsewhere and lowering the drag overall. Why does this occur though? I mean, literally a few inches below that, we get very high pressure and now all of a sudden, there's low pressure. Well, we can see why in this velocity plot. So when the windshield begins, the flow here is green, and as we move up the windshield, it becomes yellow and even red. So it accelerates. This is classic Bernoulli's equation where when the flow accelerates, the pressure drops. So in this pressure plot, we're getting low pressure here because the flow is speeding up as it goes along the windshield. But I guess that's also a little weird. I mean, why would the flow accelerate as you move up the windshield anyway? Well, it has to do with the curvature of the roof. The roof, not just of this car, but of in cars in general, are effectively wings. The flow can't help but accelerate over it. And even though we're not at the roof yet, that acceleration over the roof and low pressure there coaxes the flow further down to speed up as well. So that is why we're getting low pressure here all of a sudden and why that's reducing the drag. The next very important region for the drag is the rear window. Here, unfortunately, it's pretty bad though. I mean in that it's not really any better than the average car. That's because if we look at the pressure, it's low, you can see how blue it is. And because we have low pressure here, that sucks the car backwards. This low pressure almost completely encompasses this region. Only in the center plane do we see any high pressure. Here a little bit forms as the rear window meets the trunk. This is literally because of the flow being redirected. And this region highlights how subtle differences here can dramatically change the pressure we see. The kink where the rear window meets the trunk is enough to produce some good high pressure. I say good high pressure because in this region, this high pressure is actually pushing the car forwards now. So while most of the rear window is seeing low pressure, and that's bad for drag, this little region is eating into that badness. While the rear window is important when it comes to drag, the rear face of the car, also called the base, is even more important. That's because it is usually very flat. That means that any pressure we get here acts almost completely in the drag direction. For the rear window, because it's slanted, the pressure here contributes both to the drag and downforce. For the rear window, it's only the drag though. 
As such, the pressure we see here plays a critical role in determining the drag coefficient of the car. Here, the pressure looks bad, but it's actually better than it looks. So pretty much every car, especially luxury cars, have very low pressure in the wake. That then acts on this rear face and pulls the car backwards. That is drag. Here we definitely do get that, but we also get some high pressure too. That is quite rare. This high pressure offsets some of that low pressure pulling the car back, so the drag drops a little. It's a little hard to tell why this high pressure occurs here in this video. Let's look at the velocity plot instead. It gives a much clearer understanding. If we look at the diffuser, the underneath of the car at the rear, the flow follows it incredibly well. It just shoots up into the wake. That then highlights something even more important, the wake size. Look at how small it is. Here, small is good. Anyway, this tiny wake means the bottom edge of the car is still seeing pretty good flow. That's where the high pressure comes from. Because the diffuser is working so well, the wake is really impressive and the drag drops. This right here is a major reason why the G90's drag coefficient is so low. Whoever designed the diffuser did a great job here. Moving over half a meter to the left, the diffuser now isn't working as well, but it is still a lot better than many other cars. The diffuser is a key reason for this car's goodness. And that's actually surprising because when we talk about the downforce of this car a little later on, you will see that the results are very unexpected. Another minor point is that the spoiler on the trunk lid, it's not that aggressive. It does poke up into the flow a little bit, but not that much. That allows the flow to travel around it without increasing the wake size too much. That also helps keep the drag down. Now in these vertical planes, the car had some bad regions and some good regions. If we slice horizontally instead, the story is very different. Looking at all these different heights, the only bad regions here are really just the wheels. And it's not even like it's the entire wheel height either. Really just the bottom third of the wheels are bad. So for example, in this plane, 20 centimeters off the ground, we get massive weight from the wheels that then comes with a lot of drag. But if we jump up to 40 centimeters off the ground, the wakes are almost nothing now, and the drag production drops a little. The same at 60 centimeters off the ground. And this plane is even more impressive when you consider that so many cars produce large wakes here. That's because there is often a lot of flow in the wheelhouses that need to escape from here. The Genesis though, produces the vast majority of wheel drag around where the clean flow hits the wheels. It then spews out and creates large wakes. I should also note that Genesis was very clever when they designed the rims of the car. So the rims look like they have a lot going on. There are all these little diamond patterns going around. And while it definitely is true from a design point of view that it is a complex design, from an aerodynamics point of view, it's not. Looking at the rim closer, the inside part is completely covered. That's really good for drag reduction. Doing just that can easily drop the drag coefficient by five or even 10 counts. And it's impressive that Genesis managed to work in good aerodynamics with a good design too. So these horizontal planes really highlight why the G90 has a low drag coefficient too. Now, I said that the drag coefficient was very impressive for this car. That's not the only thing though. The amount of lift produced is also very impressive, but in a bad way. So at 100 miles per hour, the G90 produces almost 60 kilos of lift, about as much as a baby. If we scale it back to what it would be at about 72 kph, it comes in at about 12 kilos. That's still really bad though. I say that, but honestly, for the G90, it's a luxury car. The lift isn't that big a deal, I mean. It's a car for dictators, and if you have to rely on its ability to corner at high speeds to get away from angry mobs, then you're probably failing other basic dictatorial skills, like how to subdue the masses with fear and terror. Let's face it. Anyway, the reason why the G90 produces so much lift is partly because it produces so little drag. The G90 adopts a highly streamlined shape and for a car, the most streamlined shape is really a wing shape, which we also have here. So it naturally produces lift, but there's more to it than that. The first reason that has a surprising effect is the front underbody. While this design was awesome for drag reduction, for downforce production, it has gone a little too far now. What I mean by that is, usually when you have a contraction like this, the flow goes through and speeds up. We do get that here, but the difference between here and many other cars is that 
the flow will speed up enough so the pressure will drop to negative for a lot of cars. Here we don't quite reach that point. You can see that as we move from the start towards the front wheels, the pressure definitely drops, but it's not until the front wheel spoilers where we eventually get negative pressure now. What that means is that for most of this front bit, we have high pressure pushing the car up. It's made even worse by the fact that we also get very low pressure above it over the hood, that then contributes to lift production as well. So why does this front, which is so good for drag reduction, bad for downforce? Well, simply put, the contraction isn't extreme enough. If we look at the velocity plot, we can see that the flow only really goes from yellowy greenish to just yellow. If the underbody were moved closer to the ground, the contraction would become more extreme, the flow would then be squeezed through more, and as a result, it would speed up and the pressure would drop even more. So this front, while it's awesome for drag, is bad for downforce. Most other parts of this car, like the hood and the windshield, all affect the downforce in a fairly common way. There aren't any surprises here. For example, the hood, with its low pressure, sucks the car up, creating lift. The windshield has both high and low pressure, which is actually pretty good because they kind of cancel each other out. If anything, it seems like a little bit of downforce is produced because there is a little bit more high pressure and it covers a larger part of the windshield. The roof is terrible, but that comes with a great drag reduction design too. And to some extent, the very low pressure over it is counteracted by some of the low pressure underneath the car. As for the rear window and trunk, this region could be improved. It's worse than quite a lot of other cars. There's only a small region of lukewarm high pressure which helps with downforce. A way to improve this region would be to flick the spoiler up a little more, but that would then come with a larger wake and more drag. So Genesis, I think, did a good job here. Finally, this simulation was done with OpenFoam. If you want to learn OpenFoam, check out our courses here. Peace out, amigos.